I'm Anthony Habayeb from Botchain, and uh, we are a project that is really interested in bringing trust and transparency to the AI ecosystem. AI, oh shit, everybody's AI, right? But we actually think that there's some amazing synergies that are very native between AI and blockchain, and that's why so many entrepreneurs are thinking about how to bring those two together in a single concept. Um, so this is something this morning as I was working a little bit, like sort of pulling together um, some of the slides last minute as usual. I think this is pretty funny because a lot of entrepreneurs are going through this right now, right? If I'm going to build AI, blockchain helps AI. Let's do both, right? Um, but how do you do both the right way? And also as practitioners of artificial intelligence, how do we think about how we're really building a community that can compete in a world that has certain competitive disadvantages if you don't have scale? So we'll talk about that a little bit. So set the foundation around AI a little here. Um, the last panel was just talking about if you can't walk into a room and pitch a really big idea in a really big space, don't even bother doing it in the venture space. Well, AI is big and AI has lots of potential. Compound annual growth over this period of time from 16 to 24 is 40%. That's a fantastic growth rate. And what's also really interesting is we are all probably blockchain first. Some of us might also be involved in the AI space. But last year, from a venture perspective, right, um, to David's point earlier, smart money. These guys are really disciplined about what they do. Twice as much capital went into the AI space last year as compared to the funds that were raised via ICOs. So exciting, fantastic. This is great. But the marathon is just starting. Right? Building AI is not an overnight venture. It will take time to develop what is real intelligence. And when I say AI, maybe let's frame what that means a little bit. Some autonomous machine, some autonomous agent, right? something that is programmed to take inputs and then make decisions. That could be a bot. That could be elements of robotic process automation, RPA. That could be autonomous software. That could be neural processing projects. AI is a very broad concept, right? And there are different layers to artificial intelligence. So how do you build AI? The first three points here are critical to the development of artificial intelligence. You first need a lot of data. You have to train something, right? So access to data is critical for building AI. Well, then you need to know how to process that data, right? Your algorithms or your protocols, your processing layer, right, needs to be robust and capable of doing intelligent things. And some of this might be basic for you if you're in the AI space, but I thought it would be helpful to start with this framing because it'll give context to what's actually happening in blockchain in relation to AI. And then power. So processing data with al intelligent algorithms, right, takes a lot of computing power. Right? In the average layman or practitioner in the AI space, especially early stage practitioners, access to that computing power is challenging. So blockchain is fantastic for these problems. But there's a fourth thing that is actually really important when you're trying to actually sell artificial intelligence to big companies or when you're trying to engage a consumer with artificial intelligence. And that is having trust and transparency. And so far, we haven't really focused on that in the blockchain ecosystem. So this is one thing that I think was helpful that I came across by Sherman Lee, it was elements of an article that he wrote in Forbes, but the statement that's made here is interesting because I mentioned earlier competitive disadvantage. This oligopoly of companies, no one will catch them, right? In probably any near period of time in the race for AI stakes, right? No one can compete with the amount of data the amount of capital, the amount of computing resources that they have, how do you do that, right? If you're a startup that just maybe raised a couple million dollars, you burn most of that on your team. How are you possibly gonna get access to the amount of data you need to build an intelligent machine, right? Or to start computing all of these things. That's where blockchain is already helping and will have material accelerating impact on the AI ecosystem. Many of you will be familiar with some of these projects. Some of these projects are some of, I think, maybe because I'm living in AI world every day, I think some of the most visible projects happening in the blockchain space. Now, some of these projects might also suggest, hey, I'm in more than one box. Well, that's a good and bad thing, right? So as an entrepreneur and as a business operator, AI is complex. Pick something, do it well, add that value, and then think about another idea. So a couple of these projects, just trying to be um, a layer of collaborative algorithms like Singularity is amazing. 
and that's a very big project and that will take time and I hope that building Sophia to be human-like will happen in my lifetime. That's exciting. Yeah, absolutely, right? I think that the ocean protocol, right, sharing data in a trusted, secure way so that people can build AI assets is fantastic. That's a big project that will take time to do, right? But something that we think is missing from all of these really big conceptual forward-leaning AI projects is how do you collaborate in these platforms? How do you start to move from platform to platform as a developer if you actually don't know who you're working with, right? Like, if I were to text one of you right now and say, hey, I need 20 bucks to go get lunch, who the hell are you? I don't know who you are. Why would I accept something from you? Why would I do work for you? In any community, in any team, in any company, you first need to know who you're working with, right? Have a sense of what, who they are, they're legitimate, and then you start to do stuff with them. That's what I believe blockchain can also help with, that these projects are actually not looking to solve. There is no civic. There is no IOTA for AI. Right? So just think about that for a minute. Right? We've all accepted that the power of blockchain to provide a universal, verifiable identity is there. We all agree. We all agree blockchain's immutable nature can provide transparency, right? because it's immutable, the chain of things that are happening. But we haven't necessarily applied that concept yet to maybe one of the things that needs trust and transparency most. What happens in the black box? So I would suggest we don't fully trust AI yet. We're excited by it, we're intrigued by it, we're motivated to build it, but there are some barriers that, hey, 40% compound annual growth is fantastic, right? Take it all day. But there's some things that are limiting that, and that is trust. So smart guy from MIT Media Lab. Um, the point here, even the people that build artificial intelligence cannot confidently tell you what it will always do, right? They built it good artificial intelligence is not fully predictive, right? We are starting to see more of that. Even the developers don't know. So why should a customer be okay using something? Why should a consumer feel comfortable telling you my passcode to a website, like to an autonomous bot on a platform? How do I know if it's you? How do I knew, know what you're gonna do with it? So this is a couple examples of where good intentions, good platforms are just educating us of the risks in true artificial intelligence. So OpenAI, built a basic game, and the purpose of the game was for that boat to get as many points and finish the race. Well, it didn't exactly do that, because it realized like winning, in its definition of winning, meant if I blow a lot of stuff up and cause a lot of destruction, more tokens keep generating, and I can get more points, I won. Not exactly what they intended, right? So imagine like an autonomous vehicle that's programmed to do something that realizes there might be another way to achieve that outcome, right? That the programmer didn't predict that that was something that they could think. Real use case. Who's familiar with Microsoft Tay? I've talked to some people at the conference so far, right? Microsoft didn't try to build a racist, misogynistic bot and put it into the social ecosystem. At least I don't think they did. They, in two days, had to take this thing down because the amount of social signals it was getting was overwhelmingly negative, right? And so it thought, that's what, that's what I should do. And so it started to do some very bad stuff. And quickly Microsoft said, hey, like, this is difficult. It's exciting, but it's difficult. So how can we bring some standards to this industry that help us all build better, right? HTTPS was developed by like-minded people working in an ecosystem that said, let's bring security and trust to the web, right? VeriSign is a more commercial example, right? But when you see VeriSign, Right? When you see that little lock on a website, that changes your feeling of working with that thing. Right? That changes your comfort level of engaging. But you can also use AI intentionally, maliciously. <coughs> so, innocent developer trying to build a Twitter bot. Oh shit, I need to go to Australia now because I just did something really bad. My bot took over. Right? And a real example of a existing big enterprise platform Slack, right? Someone got into this platform, hacked the Slack bot, told some people, hey, I need your access to my ETH wallet to do something. People did that and lost tokens, right? This is a secure enterprise platform, right? Like Slack bot, I talk to you all the time, right? Slack bot, you might not necessarily say that's AI. The point here is actually that platform is one of the largest platforms that build, people are building autonomous communication bots on. Right? So this is a very real example of some things that are happening today in the world because trust or maybe some level of certification isn't available in that experience. 
So, <coughs> I assume some of the stuff would get shared, so I wanted to provide an uh, infographic that shares who are enterprise AI companies, right? Um, you might not be that familiar with that space. I come from a company, Tala, which is one of the founding companies of the Botchain project. So we live in this world every day. And the reason I want to focus on enterprise for the last couple of minutes here is we are selling AI to big businesses every day and CEOs want it tomorrow. And then you get to the director of IT and then you get to the compliance team and then you get to the actual operations team that say, if I can't see what this thing is doing, how can I trust the risk of this happening, right? So how do we solve that? We think Botchain is a very interesting solution in the ecosystem. Um, and I'll be very brief to tell you about the project because we are right out there and I would love to tell you some more. You can jump to our Telegram or our website to get some information about the project. But the reason that I wanted to talk about it today is because we do believe that this provides trust and transparency for an entire ecosystem. We are started by a consortium of companies that all build AI for enterprises. All of us have come together and say, we will create a standard whereby as a developer, I come to Botchain, I say, I am Anthony. I get verified using voting protocols and incentivized mechanisms to make someone do that verification process. Once that person's verified, they are now Botchain verified. And once I've been verified, I can start hashing everything my machine does. Why is that interesting? Because you don't want anybody to see the IP of your AI. You don't want anybody to see the intellectual property of what it is that your machine is doing. You also don't want to share certain sensitive data, but is your autonomous agent HIPAA compliant? Is your autonomous agent compliant with GDPR? Right? Is your bot doing what you thought it would do? And when it doesn't, how do you know that the vendor that's provided the software has actually done what they told you they did? Well, if you're bot chain verified, you can now say, here's the public private hash. You can verify that my records haven't been changed. You can confirm the states of my bot and how they changed. That's what bot chain's providing. And it's a very basic utility because once you have that, we propose you can start doing a lot of things better. You can engage with other developers across Ocean Protocol because you know if everybody there is botchain verified, they've been certified by a third party, you know that they're hashing their stuff, wouldn't you rather share your data in a collaborative way with someone that you know or that someone that you trust or someone that's been verified? Um, so Botchain, we believe, can help all of these amazing projects that are already happening. We believe we can accelerate those by providing a foundational layer of identity, a portable identity that goes from place to place, but also in particular in the enterprise space, and that's the most immediate use case we're solving. We will be, based on our current partners, we have the ability to have 50,000 developers, because we're working with platforms, that reach 100,000 enterprises in hundreds of millions of end users just by getting our early partners on the prior slide to register their bots and start hashing their actions. And then you've immediately have a community to the prior panel's point. We believe in building audience and users first. And then we will allow this community to say, what more does AI need in trust and transparency? And let's build Botchain to achieve those needs. Because without trust and transparency, much of the potential that exists in AI will not happen as fast as it can. Thank you.